welcome to the Transliteracy Project, created by Honest Accomplice Theater. I'm your host, Maybe Burke, and today's episode is all about transphobia. If you've been watching our previous transliteracy episodes, you already know that living as a trans person comes with its own unique set of obstacles. According to dictionaries, transphobia is defined as the intense dislike of or prejudice against transgender people. For trans people, it's a daily reality. Transphobia can be seen in off-handed comments, in direct acts of violence, in institutions keeping people from achieving their full potential, and everywhere in between. We invited a group of people of all different genders, transgender, cisgender, non-binary, etc., to come and talk about transphobia. What it is, where it is, the impact it has, and what you can do about it. Yeah, I mean, I think people are generally afraid of what they don't understand. But also there are times when homophobia or like transphobia doesn't mean that the person is actually afraid of the thing. It's just they don't have any knowledge about it. To me, transphobia um, actually is more about being invested in the privilege that we have as cis people. Um, in a similar way as when black people say black lives matter. Um, and that is seen as an affront to white supremacy, white power, police, etc. Um, the same thing with transphobia. It's really that like somehow this person being who they are fully is somehow an offense to an attack on who I am as a cis person. I think what really it is is an attack on the assumed privilege. I strongly believe that in case of extreme transphobia, it is an aspect of power and that's why they're usually trans women and they're usually trans women of color uh, because it is this interaction where mostly men have to show power. And I see it, you know, like when people are walking in the street and like a child is walking with their mom and their mom pulls them like, oh my goodness, like, well, why are you so afraid? I didn't do anything, I'm just existing. The anxiety of jumping on a train every day uh, and uh, the feeling of not knowing how people are going to perceive me and how they're gonna react and how that reaction may escalate. Yeah, in the train, uh, I, I experienced a lot of like uh, comments, a lot of looks, people taking a picture of you like I'm some kind of idiot that I don't notice that you're taking a picture of me, which if you ask me, I totally pose, but you choose not to. Oh, I wanna say this. Jails act in transphobic ways. So bad. Schools act in transphobic ways. Particularly for me, something that's been um, difficult lately has been uh, medical. Often is the case with trans folks, like I can't change my gender or my health insurance or I won't be able to have access to services that I need. But, you know, I had an experience with health insurance this past week where I was like, well, like, this is how I'm referred. Can you just put a note on my account that like, please refer to me in male pronouns? And they're like, no, miss, we can't do that. Like in that conversation, they kept like purposefully calling me miss and ma'am. I was like, see that example of intentional transphobia. Like Marsha P. Johnson. Like Marsha P. Johnson was a trans woman of color who started the Stonewall Riots. Like you can't ignore that fact. So for you to not include her, is completely, is, is transphobic, is wiping out trans history. Often people, when they come into new spaces um, and are asked to talk about pronouns there's, pronouns, there's often this, like, oh, it doesn't matter, or oh, that's weird, or like, oh, it's difficult to remember somebody's pronoun, but it's not actually difficult to remember someone's pronoun, it's just new and people who have had the privilege to not think about that aren't used to doing that. Uh, I notice it um, when it's written um, uh, a lot for trans non-binary identities. Like when, when I say uh, somebody wore their favorite shirt today and someone corrects me and says, no, they wore his or her favorite shirt, 
because um, apparently so it's mad. not apparently it's not grammatically <laughs> correct, even though it technically is according to the Oxford English Dictionary. But who is keeping track? Um, but the point is that it honestly it's, and that's pretty scary because people seem to value grammar over inclusion. I think it comes in subtle comments. I think that we have a history, especially in the entertainment community, of um, maybe having a joke at the expense of like switching genders or crossing genders. Get out, get out of here! So yeah, transphobia, it's everywhere. And it can have a huge impact on trans people. What hurts me the most lately are those like little microaggressions that, mm -hmm. as you were saying, come with that fascination of being trans and sometimes even comes with, you know, people trying to be nice to you and yes. don't know how to do it and it end up being aggressive. So, you know, when I'm in those situations, like I always try to de-escalate them and just take it and, you know, prefer to ruin my whole day like that instead of escalating to something that may end up, like, you know, very bad for me physically. So transphobia isn't just an evil external force in the lives of trans people. It can be something that we start to believe and act out against ourselves and others in our community. That's something we called internalized transphobia. Because we like grow up in the society, so like we grow up with these already inherently transphobic thoughts, and so also, often I find that a lot of trans people, like with going through their lives, they actually have a lot of self-internalized transphobia that they have to like beat out and need through their system to like actually overcome. The first thing that comes to my mind, like as a trans man, is I feel like there's a lot of this. Um, like toxic masculinity, and um, that's and there's this sort of like trans enough thing that happens. Like, like I feel like like how long have you been on hormones, or like if you are on hormones versus if you're not, um, like that makes you more trans, or if you pass versus if you don't pass. I feel like there's this weird hierarchy. Like coming here, I was like, oh, I don't have time to shave, and I don't look cute, and I'm like sweating, and I didn't wear a dress, and I'm not, you know, I'm like, I don't, I'm like, I don't look trans enough. Being non-binary, transgender is less understood and there are like fewer rules about it and people are just sort of sussing it out. So I think there's a lot of phobia surrounding that issue and feeling like if you're out as a non-binary person, then that's something different than being trans and then being trans is not good enough or like sensational enough or radical enough. I feel like if you say like, oh, that's transphobic, um, people often get really defensive. Like, I'm not transphobic. Like, I don't hate trans people. You don't need to hate trans people to say or do transphobic things. I say and do transphobic things sometimes, and spoilers, I'm trans. Generally, if we're calling you out on something, we're uncomfortable about it because it truly is transphobic. We're not just trying to like pin you as the bad guy. We're actually just trying to voice out that we think there's a behavior that you have that you definitely should change because it's problematic to people's well-being, honestly. <laughs> my gender, my identity, my expression of my gender and my identity are not a comment on your gender or your identity. I mean, I think there should, in general, in all institutions or organizations or just locations, wherever you are, there should be space for everyone to exist safely. And if there are institutions that don't provide that, then that's phobic. For me as a cisgender person to constantly try to improve and to continue to try to learn on my own and to do research and when I know the person and feel comfortable to ask respectful questions, but just to recognize that for us in the community, the work is our own. Yeah. We're the ones who need to be doing that work mm -hmm. um, as cisgender folks, and we're the ones who need to be prioritizing trans voices and trans identities who are requesting to be heard. I want to say that because we're working within this system, just like there is still misogyny all around us or racism in America or homophobia, 
um, we're fighting a cultural tide, and I include myself in that. And um, I mean, there are people whose pronouns I struggle with. I will even sometimes see someone and be like, girl, what are you doing? And that's me, you know, like I, um, I am still in process myself and I'm not asking for anyone else to do work that I'm not really trying myself to do. So if you're watching this, you are awesome because you're trying to get better. I do want to take a moment to address the trans people watching that transphobia is everywhere. It's unfortunately a given in our current situation, in the current climate of our world. But that doesn't mean that you have to stop existing. That doesn't mean that you can't be resisting. You can still be yourself in the face of hate. Who you are is not determined by how people perceive you. This is a short video on a complex topic. So be sure to check out the Honest Accomplice website for more information.